Hey, how's it going? So today we're gonna talk more about in depth of what makes a horror film. So here are some theories on what makes a horror film scary. The first theory, psychoanalyst Sigmund Freud portrays that horror comes from the uncanny. Emergence of images and thoughts of primitive Iad. The purpose of horror films is to highlight unconscious fears and desires, urges and primitive archetypes that are buried deep in our subconscious brain. Images of shadows play important roles because they are common to us all. For example, in Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho, a mother plays the role of evil in the main character's subconscious. We watch scary movies because they help us release our anxiety and fears deep inside our conscious. The Greek philosopher Aristotle introduced catharsis, which is a process where we release our negative emotions by watching violent or scary movies. In other words, they help us purge our aggressive emotions. We also burn our negative feelings and worries about the real world and expel them by watching horror films. In the end, the killer of the antagonist has to suffer, which gives us the ultimate resolution of the viewers. Dr. Dolph Zillman's the Psychology of Scary Movies, author John Hess comments, Four negative feelings created by horror films actually intensify the positive feelings when the hero triumphs in the end. And even small studies have shown that people's enjoyment was actually higher during the scary moments of horror films. A third theory of the transfer process is not limited to a single emotion. For example, at first when the audience sees the villain defeating the hero, they are angry. But this changes to pleasure when the second stimulus occurs when the hero wins. The pleasure makes up the third theory, which indicates that we like to watch horror movies because we want the bad people in the film to be killed. Noel Carell, the film scholar, states that the idea that the horror films is the product of curiosity and fascination. In his article, Why Horror, Carol quotes that horror genre gives every evidence of being pleasurable to its audience, but it does so by means of trafficking in the very sorts of things that causes discomfort, distress, displeasure. He talks about audiences' reactions to the horror that exists outside of every day, therefore explaining that the emotions of discomfort, distress, and so forth, but horror films can manipulate these emotions at quite enjoyable times. Also according to Carol, we want to understand why monsters exist in the first place. And they are fascinating because they are part of the fantasy. He states, Thus we are attracted to and many of us seek out horror fictions with some sort of decide that the fact that they provoke disgust. Because that disgust is required for the pleasure involved in engaging our curiosity and the unknown in drawing into our process of revelation. Carol argues that disgusting is fascinating, since it violates our own human means. Carol states, all narratives might be thought to involve the desire to know. However, the horror fiction is a special variation on the general narrative motivation because it has the center of something which it gives five principle unknowable. The meaning the audience already knows the plot and the characters are already disgusting. And the surprise in the horror narrative through the discovery of curiosity should give us satisfaction. Marvin Zuckerman proposed that people who scored high in sensation seeking scale often reported a greater interest in exciting things like roller coasters, bungee jumping, and horror films. He argued, more individuals who are attracted to horror films desire the sensation of experience. However, researchers did not find the correlation to thrill-seeking activities and enjoyment of watching horror films always significant. The Gender Socialization Theory by Zillman Waver exposed 36 male and 36 female undergraduates to a horror film of the same age, opposite gender, companion of lower or high initial appeal who express mastery, affective, indifference, or distress. They reported that young men enjoyed the film mostly when female companions were distressed by the movies. Young women enjoyed the movie mostly when their male components were less frightened. DJ Scally, cultural historian, explains that horror films are reflective of society fears. In his book, The Monster Show, he talks about horror entertainment links between the greater 
social crisis of our time. DJ Skull's work is described as directly related to our country's current economic woes and fears about a falling safety in a changing world. Horror entertainment is the outlet in that social anxieties and become a place to escape from social failures. Glenn Walters identifies three primary factors that attract the audience to horror entertainment. First, filmmakers and producers create elements of mystery, suspense, gore, terror, and shock in the film, which creates tension. Different missing scene includes lighting, costumes, and grotesque sounds, creating suspense leading to a big reveal. In the same fashion, multiple size shots, camera angles like long tracking shots can capture the character's nervousness leading to the tensions. The audience finds some of the relevance in the film, whether it can be universal like fear of death, the unknown, or the cultural, social, religious relevance. For example, South Korea is a highly competitive country and it is one of the top countries with the highest suicidal deaths. Because of the strict studies in middle school and high schools, many students commit suicide by, by falling off the rooftop of their schools. There are many films with young girls coming back to haunt their enemies with long black hair and pale skin. A highly profitable film genre due to its social relevance. In a horror movie, having too many realistic qualities can lose the entertainment value. Our imagination has a greater influence while we watch a horror movie. Every scene in the film we imagine the protagonist is going to go through, filmmakers use tension and suspense to grab our attention because we are curious what's going to happen to our character. Furthermore, even after the film we wonder about the mystery of the next sequel, the anticipation of the next film will be released. Moving images captivating our conscious during the film, the images and shots that constantly change the screen become a contextual catalyst. Moving images rouse over conscious keeps us alert. They inform us that something is about to happen. During horror films, our conscious is always alert, expecting something to pop out. There is always a scene where it is extremely silent, where the character is alone and helpless. Even if we know the character is going to die and we expect it in the next scene, we are sometimes left in awe and perhaps in the way that how the character is going to be killed. Also, psychologists Freud and Jung made different psychoanalytic theories why we love to watch horror movies. From his essay The Uncanny, Freud described horror as a manifesting of the uncanny reoccurring thoughts that are lying in the conscious by represented by our ego, but is not familiar to us. But in an essay from the archetypes and the collective unconscious by Odin argues that the horror films are popular because the movies tap into primitive archetypes buried deep in the collective subconscious. Images like shadows and the mother play important roles in the horror genre. The audience is going through a hypothesis in its captivating of its consciousness compared to our state and while we are dreaming. We are so absorbed into the plot and the quick images passing by that even if we already know what was going to happen, the audience acts and reacts with the actor. Separation between reality and the screen, another reason why we watch movies is because we are able to participate in the adventure of the characters risk-free. Author Jean Militre says, it let me committed to a situation from which I can voluntarily withdraw. Certainly, participation in movies gives the actual experience the characters go through. We have the freedom to choose the extent of our participation with the characters. If setting and plots were real, like those in horror films, it can be part of us in a series of consequences. We can never escape, but because we experience through scenes and imagination, we are assured that we will not face any dangers. Sometimes we get lost in the plot, as if the character on the screen is us, but as soon as something dangerous occurs, we come back to our senses and withdraw from the scene. A psychological study was done to determine why college students would choose and play to watch bloody fiction films more than violent documentaries. The study explains 
By knowing horror movies, our imagery, the students are more relieved and less disturbed. Dr. Glenn Walters explains psychological research to explain tension and unrealism are the main factors why we enjoy horror films. In conducting research on disgust, exposed college students to three documentary video depicting real life horrors. One clip showed cows being slaughtered, killed, and butchered in a slaughterhouse. A second clip pictured a live monkey being struck in the head with a hammer, having a skull cracked open, and then its brain being shown on the plate. A third was a child facial skin graft being pulled back before surgery. 90% of the students turned the video off before the reaction ended. Even if the majority of the individual who watched the tape in its entirety found the images disturbing, yet many of them have found a repugnant posed that the logical question of why these students found the 11 documentary film so unpleasant, when most of them had sat through the horror pictures that were appropriately more violent and bloody. The answers that McCurley came up with was that the fictional nature of horror films affords viewers a sense of control of placing psychological distance between them and the violent act they are witnessing. Most people who view horror films understand that the film events are unreal, which furnishes them with psychological distance from the horror portrayed in the film. In fact, that there is evidence that the young viewers who perceive greater realism in horror films are more negatively affected by their exposure to horror films than viewers who perceive the films as unreal. We choose to watch horror films even if we know they can be violent, bloody, or gruesome. People are attracted to the eerie music and enjoy the thrill of the character in danger. In general, our adrenaline rushes because of the excitement and fear of extinguishing when a killer strikes in the movie by also recalling the psychological arousal when the blood pressure and heart rate increases when the movie ends. We come out of the movie theater and criticize that it's a bad movie, even if the movie was scary enough, because we enjoy our muscles become tense and our palms become sweaty. The reaction to what we see on the screen is not limited to the brain and the extent throughout the body. The brain sends the alarm signal activating the automatic nervous system by increasing the production of adrenaline to neurotransmitters that causes some changes in the psychological level. Professor Zald's research on a chemical dopamine suggests that chemical in the brain associated with pleasure rewards give us a sense of satisfaction when you complete a task. Everyone is different to thrill seekers and thrill avoiders, but Dr. Thrill Zald states, those with higher tolerance to risk, they have more dopamine, and for thrill avoiders, they have less dopamine. From the research, Dr. Zald, we can conclude that those who enjoy watching scary movies have higher tolerance to high risk, and thus have more satisfaction. Adverse response to animals and fear responses to the brain Mainly themes in horror classics such as The Rats, Cujo, King Kong, and Jaws portray human running away from the monsters, animals, because they are at risk of being eaten. Through evolutionary theory and research, we can understand that being captured by a carnivorous predator is a fear and is why some filmmakers use the monstrous trope in making people scared. Science writer David Ozerman, among the earliest forms of human self-awareness, was the awareness of being meat. This saying, our ancestors' greatest fear was being eaten alive. Michael Gronsky, an associate professor of communication of Manhattan College and the editor of the textbook, Neuroscience and the Media, New Understandings and Representation states, usually when we're watching something, we shut down motor regions in our brain. And yet those stimuli from the shocking scene are so strong that we overcome the motor system. In other words, because we are in the theater and relaxed and only our awareness is active, we jump and yell because the film bypasses our tranquil state and tops into a primal instinct, which is to react immediately, to protect ourselves and warn others. Before taking to process what scares us, Grabowski also explains the scream is why we alert others to your social groups and scare of the attackers. Our reaction and emotions from a scary scene happen first before we actually realize it, it was real. 
before we realize it because it's in our primitive mindset which describes our nature to respond to threat by processing traits from our ancestors from our own parents. Abigail Marsh, professor of psychology of Georgetown University, talks about how the triggers signal in the brain. She states, the signal travels to the amygdala, the region near the base of the brain. The amygdala from the fires a brain chemical called glutamate out into the two regions of the brain. The first region makes us freeze in an involuntary jump. The reaction are so automatic because the signal is sent deep into the base of the brain to an area that we can lightly control over. The second signal is sent to the brain triggers and nervous system. The system responds to the light or fight or flight instinct, which our bodies go into superhuman mode. It elevates our heart rate, blood pressure, and also adrenaline through our bodies. That's the feeling we get when we're scared. So that was some in-depth of horror films. Hope you enjoy. Um, it's quite interesting. I apologize for reading off the script. I have a horrible memory, like I say many times before, but um, hope you enjoy. And let me know what you find scary in horror films. Thank you and have a great day. Bye.